The United Nations incoming special envoy for climate change has a bleak message about global warming. Mark Carney says the financial sector needs to act more quickly on the climate crisis before it's too late. The Bank of England governor previously served as Canada's top central banker and he will take over his new role at the UN next year. In a BBC interview broadcast today, Carney spoke about what needs to be done in the years ahead. It's talked about 2020 being a decade of action, absolutely necessary, uh, on climate change. We want action on the finance side. We want, um, on that disclosure, companies uh, doing that disclosure, we want that to become the norm. I would say we're in a climate crisis, um, just like a financial crisis, where uh, action needs to be taken. Now, this is a slow burn crisis, if you will. I think what's essential on this topic on climate change is that we have uh, a cross-party, non-partisan approach to it, that the science is clear, that the type of transition that we, what we've been talking about, that we get as specific as possible uh, about what's needed. And it's not just change in the financial sector that's needed to combat the climate crisis. Experts also say consumers will have to adapt as well. But how exactly do we need to change and how quickly? For more on these questions and where the climate fight goes, we're joined by Kai Chan. He is a professor at the Institute for Resources, Environment and Sustainability at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. But he's here in Toronto for the holidays, so we have the pleasure of having uh, Kai join us here here in, in studio, and, and Kai, as someone who has studied climate change, what was your reaction when you hear those dire words coming from Mark Kearney? It's great to hear them. There are no surprises there, but it's really excellent to hear it coming from somebody in that position, somebody who headed up the Bank of England and had a similar role in Canada. Climate scientists and climate economists have been saying these same kinds of things for decades now, and so it's super to have that percolate through. And Carney went so far as to saying that global warming could render assets of many financial corporations worthless. Uh, do you agree? Does business need to take a lead here when it comes to dealing with the climate crisis? Absolutely, I agree. I mean, it's, it's just not even a doubt that many of the coal and oil and gas assets are going to have to remain in the ground. And, and that means leaving them stranded which is going to have a major hit on business. And business does need to take the lead on this. It, um, really, it's, going to, it's a jockeying of position that we're seeing here between some firms that are trying to lead the way in climate action and then other firms that are trying to maintain the status quo of their business model by arguing against climate action, or at least strong climate action. And this is happening in a global environment where there's different government incentives. How does that play into it when one country may care more about climate change than another? Yeah, I mean, we have to proceed as if we are leading the way from a kind of moral perspective. We can't pay attention to the fact that there are other nations that are holding back because every nation is going to make that same argument to justify that kind of a laggard behavior, right? So I think, you know, this is really a telling moment where we all know what's needed and it's just a matter of who's going to step up to the line first. Where do governments play into that? Because we're talking about businesses in the financial sector sort of coming clean about where their assets are. Um, but at what point? Do does regulation have a stronger impact than what businesses decide to do on their own? It's got to be both working together. It's too late in this game to be thinking about trying to solve it from one sector or another. The regulations shape the way that businesses respond. Business change will shape how consumers can act and consumers can also intervene with businesses and then as citizens in terms of how governments act. And we all need to be thinking about how we can intervene in these various systems to bring about a transformative change in all of them. You know, a, a colleague of yours was interviewed recently, uh, Mark Jacquard, and, and he said that this climate fight doesn't need to necessarily involve converting everyone over. He advocates a pragmatic approach that focuses mainly on domestic domestic industries and on particular sectors. Is that kind of pragmatism enough? It makes sense to be pragmatic in terms of not worrying about convincing everybody because we won't. As he points out, people who are making money off this, off energy that is intensive from a climate perspective, they're hard to convince. So move on, right? 
Um, where we focus is a question of continual debate. Do we only focus on domestic? I would say no. Should we focus there and make sure that we are transforming our domestic energy industries that provide clean electricity for Canadians and then also for Americans as we export it? Absolutely. Transport systems? Absolutely. Everything that we have power to do within the nation, we should absolutely focus on. But we can do more as well, right? We don't need to focus on the one at the exclusion of the other. You've been studying climate change and its impacts from various perspectives for a long time. A decade ago, did you think that we would be here? Has the attention changed uh, in a way that surprises you? Not really, no. I mean, I think optimistically a decade ago, I probably imagined that we'd have a shift in the conversation sooner. Um, it feels like we're skating right up to the brink of Niagara Falls, right? And, and we're just hoping that our skates are gonna hold as we, as we come to that edge. Um, I feel like we're leaving it to the very last kind of conceivable moment to turn around a really, really large ship that, uh, that, that just can't be turned around quickly. So if someone's hearing that at home and they understand what you're saying, and we're also talking about big corporations with money and coal and in oil, what can individuals do that's going to make a difference? Again, the focus has to be on this system change, right? So thinking about changing our own consumption is a really important piece of it, but only a very small piece of it. So when we think about, you know, foregoing a flight, absolutely we should try to do that. But we need to think about all of those changes in a way that will inspire others to join along with us, right? And that will change the way that businesses see opportunities, not just a private personal sacrifice, because it's way too light for that to make enough of a difference. We have to change the way that people think about it so that climate change becomes a major moral issue, right? I, in a couple of years, you might see people giving cut eye at the folks who are sitting in first class recognizing that you know the amount of space that those people are taking up is enough to bring on board at least two people right not just one and that from a climate perspective you might see that as being a shame it's just before new year's do you have one thing that makes you optimistic about where we're at in this fight there's no one thing i mean and you know to be to tell the truth although we're seeing a change in the direction that is not from a biophysical perspective. From a biophysical perspective, we're still seeing atmospheric concentrations rise. We're even still seeing emissions of global warming pollution rise, right? So everything is still going in the wrong direction from a biophysical perspective. From a social perspective, the tone of the conversation mm -hmm. is changing, and that's where I find my optimism. But we can't imagine that that's enough, right? We can't get complacent about that. That's only the beginning. It's the biophysical changes that matter, and the, and the atmosphere is still getting worse from a climate perspective. Thank you so much for joining us, Kai. Thank you. Kai Chan is a professor at the Institute for Resources, Environment and Sustainability at the University of British Columbia.